I know how to occupy my time to its best advantage. Then when a call comes, I'm ready. And he says, don't you ever get a bit fed up? And I say, fed up? What with? Actors and directors will intuitively and instinctively insert pauses into a text. We usually figure out our own pauses where we feel we should pause. The difference with Pinter's pauses as they evolved is that he specified where they should be. My understanding is that he was really trying to recreate the way people speak. His script is like a musical score. A pause is a bit like a rest. It's holding your breath and waiting to see what's going to come next. It's a very active forward word. I think when Pinder writes a pause or when he writes a silence, it's not for the sake of the pause and the silence, it's for the sake of what just got said. And this girl, love me back. And then his wife, after a pause, says, well, wasn't that me, darling? And he says, who? They're very much about control. And sometimes the most powerful way that one can exercise that control is by holding a silence until someone squirms. So in that moment, she regroups what she means by that. Because when he does ask me questions that I find particularly troubling, sometimes I'll just throw it back right in his face and say, what do you mean? The wheels turning of the mind, the rumblings in your gut. What resonates for me in that moment where uh, my character Briggs is introduced to this perfect stranger by his friend John Foster, Jack Foster, Foster. This man's name is Briggs. It's do I want to jump in here? Do I not want to jump in here? What am I gonna jump in with? So it causes a really interesting tension because it draws the attention of the audience to what is not being said. It's within that pause that we, are, that we do lean forward and we are, we are waiting to see what happens next. The vitality of silence prepares us for the possibilities of things to come.